So, in the continuation of the antiviral drugs, first let me discuss the anti herpes drugs, right? So, these are the group of drugs which are active against the herpes zoster. Now, if you take this particular anti herpes drugs, remember most of these drugs they are anti metabolites. Alright, so most of these drugs they are anti metabolites, they act by inhibiting the viral DNA polymerase, right? They act by inhibiting the viral DNA polymerase. So once this viral DNA polymerase is inhibited, the replication or the growth of the herpes does not occur. Now, now if you take this particular anti herpes drugs, they undergo bioactivation by kinases, right? So first they undergo bioactivation by kinases. And after getting bioactivation by kinases, they will inhibit the viral DNA polymerase. Okay, so they undergo bioactivation by kinases, right? So after bioactivation by kinases these anti herpes drugs they will inhibit the viral dna polymerase now now among these anti herpes drugs first let me discuss about a very important drug that is acyclovir and as well as its congeners so first let me discuss about them acyclovir now so if you take this particular acyclovir, remember it is a guanosine analog, right? It is a guanosine analog which is active against the herpes simplex virus and it is also active against the varicella zoster virus, right? So this is a guanosine analog, right? And this particular acyclovir which is a guanosine analog is active against the herpes simplex virus and as well as varicella zoster virus right so it is active against the hsv1 and as well as hsv2 and it is also active against the varicella zoster virus right it is also active against the varicella zoster virus now the important multiple choice question here is that this acyclovir is not active against the cytomegalovirus infections, right? This is an important point. So, this acyclovir, remember, it is not active against the cytomegalovirus infections. Now, let me tell you the mechanism of action of this acyclovir. Right, let me tell you the mechanism of action of this particular acyclovir. Now, if you see here, this particular acyclovir is first activated by the virus specific kinases. Okay. And this acyclovir, it is activated or it is converted to acyclovir monophosphate. Okay. So, this particular acyclovir is converted to acyclovir monophosphate. Right, it is converted into acyclovir monophosphate. And for this conversion, what is required? The kinases are required. And what is that particular virus specific kinase? So, it is the virus specific kinase which converts acyclovir to acyclovir monophosphate. And that particular virus specific kinase is thymidine kinase. Okay, so in the presence of thymidine kinase. And remember, this thymidine kinase, it is the virus specific kinase. Right, it is a virus specific kinase. So remember, in the presence of thymidine kinase, which is a virus specific kinase, acyclovir is converted into acyclovir monophosphate. But remember a point, the virus, it develops resistance 
due to mutation of this particular kinase right due to mutation of the kinase so the virus can develop resistance how do it develop resistance by mutation of the kinase so once there is mutation of the kinase right once there is mutation of the kinase the acyclovir is not converted into acyclovir monophosphate now once there is mutation of the virus specific kinase what will happen is some or other way the acyclovir it gets activated how if the virus specific kinase is not there then there is host kinases will convert acyclovir to the acyclovir triphosphate right so acyclovir in the presence of right in the presence of the host kinase it is converted into acyclovir triphosphate right it is converted into acyclovir triphosphate now this product which one this acyclovir triphosphate this product competitively inhibits the action of the dna polymerase okay so this particular product competitively inhibits right competitively inhibits the action of dna polymerase right competitively inhibits the action of the viral dna polymerase okay and not only this particular product will inhibit the viral dna polymerase it also gets incorporated into the dna of the virus and causes the termination of the dna right so this also gets incorporated in dna and causes right and causes its termination right so this product competitively it inhibits the action of dna polymerase and also it gets incorporated in the dna and it causes chain termination now now you take the route of administration of this particular acyclovir this acyclovir it can be administered topically or it can be administered orally right it can be administered topically orally or it can be administered intravenously right or it can be administered intravenously now the other very important point regarding this the acyclovir is that this acyclovir it has very short t half and it requires multiple daily dosing right so it has very short t half now because it is having very short t half it requires multiple daily dosing all right it requires multiple daily dosing now you take the excretion remember it is primarily excreted via kidneys right it is primarily excreted by kidneys now let me shortly revise here this anti herpes drugs remember they are anti metabolites and they act by inhibiting the viral dna polymerase and they undergo bioactivation by kinases and later on they will cause the inhibition of the viral dna polymerase so if you take the acyclovir it's a guanosine analog which is active against the herpes simplex 1 and herpes as well as the herpes simplex virus 2 and it is also active against the varicella zoster virus the point is it is not active against the cmv infection now it is activated by a virus specific kinase which is called thymidine kinase to form acyclovir monophosphate but the virus develops resistance due to the mutation of the kinases and then this particular acyclovir it is activated by the host kinases to form the acyclovir triphosphate now this particular acyclovir triphosphate remember this product competitively inhibits the action of the dna polymerase 
and also gets incorporated into the DNA and causes the chain termination. And if you take the route of administration, it is administered topically, orally or intravenously. And this particular drug, it is having very short T-half and it requires multiple daily dosing. And if you take the route of excretion, it is primarily excreted by kidneys.